Hey, I'm Brandon, owner of Event Horizon Services. We're a custom wiring shop specializing in audio, video, and lighting, and we also do connector sales. I got a great topic for you today, so let's do the intro and get right into it. Today I want to talk to you about tarnished silver connectors. Why you should worry about them and how to clean them. So let's get started. This video will focus on silver contacts like Neutrix XX Series XLRs. These connectors have silver plated contacts. Yes, this is actual silver, not just silver looking metal. It's element AG with atomic number 47. What is the concern here? Silver tarnishes over time when exposed to the atmosphere. But let's back up for a second. Common electrical contacts will be plated with gold, silver, nickel, or tin. Nickel and tin are out of the scope of this video, but no, they are not as good as gold or silver. We love gold contacts because it is solid. Gold does not oxidize or tarnish, so it maintains electrical contact better than any other metal. But gold is very expensive. Silver, on the other hand, is the best electrical conductor, so it has potential to provide the lowest contact resistance. It also has great lubricity, making it great for contacts to slide together in part. It also has a lower cost, so plating can be thicker, allowing for more durability. The catch is, it can form a tarnished layer that can affect the connector's performance. The silver sulfide layer is relatively conductive and is what we want to focus on in today's video. I've also heard that it can be more conductive than the silver layer it's on. So while making this video, I've struggled to find contacts that are bad enough to use as an example. So I've ended up using chemical tarnishing techniques to make some really bad connectors. With that said, I'm actually finding more male connectors with tarnish problems than female ones. But that might be because the female connectors are harder to see or because the contacts are more enclosed, preventing them from getting exposed to the air as much. What is the tarnish? Silver reacts with sulfur in the atmosphere and forms a silver sulfide layer. The layer can often be wiped off with the sliding of the contacts. Many connectors that are in constant use, plugged and unplugged, can naturally remove this tarnish. Let's look at some here. Here is a new contact. You see the new silver finish. Here's one with a natural tarnish. Here's one that we chemically tarnished. So the concern here is to know what this is doing to our connections. So to test this, we are doing a basic resistance test. To briefly explain the testing, we're using a standard four-wire test. We use a fixed current supply to power the device and read the voltage across the device. We're currently running this with a six amp current and reading the current and voltage with two fluke meters. You then put the current and voltage numbers into an equation and there is your resistance. While we are running a high current, the voltage is in the milliamp range which is very low. I do understand that we probably should have more accurate meters for this, but this is what we have. And note that this is just a DC resistance test. I would love to be able to do a spectral test to see what this does over frequency range, but we don't have the technology to do that here. This would be a good time to add that to know what you expect for a three pin XLR is to have less than or equal to three milliohm contact resistance. So that is 0.003 ohms, which is a very low resistance. So moving forward, I am just going to give you the milliohm number. To start off with, we used a gold connector as sort of a control test. We tested two sets and they read 2.99, again, milliohms, and 2.81, which is totally within spec which is less than three milliohms. Our next test was new silver contacts. They tested at 2.61 and 2.78. Next up, we did a light natural tarnish 
that came in at 3.49 and 2.53. I should point out that this gave us the highest normal test and the lowest normal test. Next up, we did the chemical tarnish test. And I would say, right off, I don't actually trust these results. They fluctuated greatly and were very unstable resistance. So it's hard to say what the chemical tarnish was really doing to our contacts. So basically, I wouldn't chemically tarnish your connectors that you're trying to use. But for comparison, the results we came up with were 6.65 and 8.99. Still not really that high, but almost double or triple the regular tests. I was also able to find two really bad male connectors. And so I tested them with new females and came up with 2.99 and 2.99 and then I tested them with two tarnished females at 3.39 and 3.51. So those are the results. Just to put this in context, if I use Megami 2549, which is Megami's very, very good grade mic cable, it has 22 gauge conductors with a resistance of 18 milliohms per foot. That's 0.018 ohm. With a connector of three milliohms, that's equivalent of adding 4.5 inches to the length of your wire. That is at a DC resistance test, which could vary at frequency. So now let's look at cleaning them. I reached out to Neutrik and Switchcraft on this topic, but neither of them had any specific instructions on how to clean the connectors. With Neutrik saying, quote, Standard silver dip or cream often provides successful outcomes. And Switchcraft saying, quote, the oxidations can be swept off with a few mating, unmating cycles with the proper connector. It can also be simply wiped off with tarnish remover. At first I was aggravated that they make these connectors and they don't have any more specific suggestions on how to deal with it. But as I've done more research, I really do think it is because it is not a big deal. We have already looked at the numbers and they're not really that bad. So they really are not a big concern. If you want to clean them, here's what I did. I am not sponsored by any of these products. I just researched and purchased them myself. I purchased a silver dip, Goddard's Silver Dip. Be sure to read all the warnings before using the less tarnish you're removing, the quicker it cleans. For heavy tarnish, it will need to soak for a little while. To clean, I would open up the connectors, removing the shell. And then dip the contacts in the silver dip. Once the tarnish is removed to an acceptable level, shake off all the extra, and then I washed it off with a contact cleaner. Who knows what this stuff will do long term if left on the contacts. I then went ahead and used air duster to remove all the contact cleaner and to dry them which isn't really necessary, but it sped things along a little bit. Lastly, a squirt of deoxit can help lubricate them so they mate more smoothly, which again, isn't necessary, but never hurts. So, 
for good measure, I went ahead and tested these before and after, just so we know what we're actually doing to these connectors. So I cleaned three sets of them and kept them in sets. And here are the results. Set one, dirty, was 2.28, and clean, 2.48. Set two, dirty, 1.78, and clean, 2.39. And set three, dirty, 1.18, and clean, 2.13. In case you weren't paying attention, all the tarnish connectors tested with a lower resistance than the clean ones and a note that the clean ones were still within Neutrix spec. I have been selling custom cables for well over 20 years now, and I get the silver contact question not infrequently. So now I feel I can conclusively say that it really doesn't matter. So to wrap this video up, yes, this is a very limited scope testing, very controlled environment, and very limited number connections tested so yeah you might run into other scenarios out on the field maybe dirty with other things than just tarnish might be breaking the contacts so because I mean it does happen what I'd really like to look at is some really bad naturally tarnished connections and see how they compare but the worst ones I could find were really bad, but they didn't test that bad. And the ones I tested were 20 to 25 years old, probably. So, if anyone's got some they want to send me, please do. I'll test them, see what we come up with. But in result is, I don't really have a great concern with the Tarnish connections anymore. So, not that I ever worried too much about it. And with that said, if you're in a weird environment and they have tarnished a lot worse, you should always keep an eye on it, and knowing how to clean them if you need to is probably important. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe if you feel inspired, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. Thank you. Have a good day.